name is Kathy, and today I will be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with esophagus, stomach, and duodenum ailments that can that contain that start with the letters B through D. But before this, before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues with your skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidneys, bladder, and ailments specific to women and specific to men, then issues of the hormones and metabolism. Then after that, I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system. Then issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. Then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhoods, and special issues of adolescence. And finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it is recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenic amalgam types, those who react strongly to arsenic amalgam. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. And an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. That is, this is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I have completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techni techniques without the approval of your physician. So let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with esophagus, stomach, and duodenum ailments. Today, we will continue with, with esophagus, stomach, and duodenal ailments that begin with the letters B through D. The digestive process begins in the mouth and continues in the stomach and duodenum. Food is rhythmically squeezed down the esophagus, which is a muscular tube about 10 inches long, past a one-way sphincter or valve and into the stomach. Usually food stays in the stomach for three or four hours, then enters the duodenum through another one-way sphincter. But a fatty meal can slow the process down, just as great stress can speed it up. When we see or smell food or anticipate a good meal, the brain not only tells certain cells in the stomach lining to start secret secreting digestive chemicals, but also tells others to secrete the hormone gastrin, which sets full-scale production of digestive juices in motion. 
The most important chemicals produced by the stomach are hydrochloric acid and the enzyme pepsin and lipase. The acid produced by the stomach is of sufficient strength to liquefy meat and to kill the bacteria in food effectively, protecting the rest of the digestive system from infection caused by putrefaction. It is also necessary for the absorption of calcium, iron, and other nutrients. Pepsin breaks down proteins into smaller units and lipase has a similar effect on fats. Both enzymes require, require an acid environment. However, if the stomach did not also have millions of mucus producing cells in its walls, it would start to digest itself. Ulcers are, in effect, areas where the mucus lining has been destroyed. Although the stomach mostly secretes substances that break food down, it also absorbs small molecules such as water, salt, vitamin B12, and alcohol, and feeds them into the bloodstream. Once in the duodenum, semi-digested food is made alkaline and further broken down by secretions from the pancreas and any untreated fat in it is emulsified or broken down into very small droplets by bile from the gallbladder. Both the pancreas and gallbladder have ducts that open into the duodenum, and the flow of digestive juices through them is controlled by a series of hormones secreted as soon as food mixed with acid enters the duodenum. Belching Belching is usually caused by swallowing air when nervous or by eating too fast. To relieve the discomfort in the stomach, the air is regurgitated as wind. Belching may also be a symptom of indigestion, especially after rich food or hiatus hernia. If bending or lying down makes the wind worse, pyloric stenosis or gallstones, if there is wind after eating fatty foods, Wind is also common in babies and in the later stages of pregnancy as the uterus presses on the stomach. Specific remedies to be taken every half hour for up to 10 doses. If the belching relieves the discomfort, use CarboVeg 6C. If belching does not relieve discomfort, use China 6C. If there is a craving for sweet things and the abdomen is distended with diarrhea and the wind is made worse by worrying about some future event, use Argentum Knit 6C. If the person is very hungry yet feels full after a few mouthfuls of food and produces a lot of wind, use Lycopodium 6C. For belching that is accompanied by nausea, and the person feels worse in hot rooms, use Pulsatilla 6C. Difficulty swallowing. Difficulty in swallowing may be brought on by anxiety, which interferes with the nervous control of per peristalsis and usually feels like a ball or lump in the throat. A fish bone lodged in the throat can cause coughing and pain upon swallowing. Some narrowing of the throat is quite normal with a sore throat or tonsillitis as an example. If food feels stuck high up in the chest and the pain worsens when you bend or lie down, the cause may be a hiatus hernia or reflux esophagitis or stricture of the esophagus. Pain upon swallowing accompanied by inexplicable weight loss of more than one pound per week may be cancer of the esophagus, in which case see a doctor within 48 hours. Specific remedies to be given every four hours for up to two days. If the throat feels as if there is a lump in it, but swallowing is otherwise normal, use Ignatia 30C. If the person can't stand scarves or tight clothes around the neck, use Lachesis 30C. If the throat feels as if a fishbone is stuck in it, but no fishbone has been swallowed, use nitric acid 30C. If muscles go into spasm upon swallowing, use stromonium 30C. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. 
To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.